Connie Preisner here with Horse Plus Humane Society. First off, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to come and learn about horse slaughter and the PAST Act and these laws that could end the suffering that we see for horses. And um, I have Jonathan here uh, when I'm in Washington, D.C. Um, Jonathan is there with us and Jonathan is a an awesome guy. He knows um, he knows those buildings like the back of his hand. I feel like um, I am not used to uh, city life much. And um, Jonathan is the best guide going from office to office, and um, he has some important things to let us know about today. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jonathan. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tani. And hello, everyone. It is great to uh, meet you guys. Um, so I've been, um, my name is Jonathan Taylor. Uh, I go by JT. So JT is fine um, if you guys want to call me JT. But um, I um, am Horse Plus's lobbyist. So I have been working in the lobbying field for uh, almost five years now. Started off in the recycling realm, um, uh, um, lobbying for the recycling industry. And then now I'm currently at a firm lobbyist. Um, and lobby it um, uh, is the the voice for Horse Plus um, in Washington D.C. So, for those who are kind of new to the ideas of lobbying, you know, I know sometimes when people um, hear the word lobbying or they hear the word lobbyist, they get a little frightened sometimes because we seem like bad people. But at the end of the day, nothing is going to get done on Capitol Hill unless there's someone talking about an issue, right? So, um, you know, the staffers on Capitol Hill, the congressmen, the senators, the congresswomen, they um, get informed on these issues by people like me going up to the Hill on a daily basis, talking about some of the very important things that we have going on, right? Like talking about um, uh, reminding them on some bills like the SAFE Act, which we're going to uh, talk about more here in a second, um, tying along with the, the PAST Act to um, which will um, start a campaign for that um, here, the Wild Horse and Borough Protection Act and the uh, I'm sorry, um, Act of 2023, um, right? All these important issues that um, we are dealing with um, to promote um, the uh, welfare for um, horses and, and animals across America. Um, that's what we're doing on, on the daily basis. Um, but, you know, this call that, you know, I asked honey to get up and running. Um, this is kind of me tagging you guys in for a little bit of help, right? So my idea and my my goal is to um, obviously be your guys' main voice in, in Washington, D.C., but whenever and wherever I can get you guys involved and get you guys involved in the process, because it's, it's an awesome process. And, you know, us as Americans, we have our right to talk to our legislatures, uh, to um, get involved. So, you know, any time that we can get everyone involved is is, is a great time. And, you know, we're going to work for that. But, um, you know, we're asking you guys to get involved uh, because it's a it's a crunch time right now um, in Washington, D.C. So um, without giving too big of a, you know, civics and economics um, uh, lesson, um, what we're trying to do, um, we're trying to get, you know, all these bills, but um, the, the SAFE Act really has some good steam this year, right? And what we're trying to do, uh, the PASS Act too, with, with even more, more co-sponsors, but um, what we're really trying to do is get these bills attached to the farm bill, which is like, it's, it's, it's an omnibus. And what that bus pretty much is, is all these bills, you know, get, get a seat on the bus, right? And then the bus drives through the gates of the White House and it gets signed off and checked by the president. Um, a lot easier for us to get bills passed on these buses because, you know, there's multiple seats, president's expecting the bus, you know, Congress in it, everyone knows about it, right? Um, and the farm bill itself, it's coming into crunch time. So uh, the Senate and the House of Representatives are all in what's called markup time right now for the farm bill. So pretty much what markup time is, is they're all sitting down and they're going through all the list of bills and saying, well, you know, this bill, I'm not too sure. I don't think we should put it in. Or, you know, this bill, the SAFE Act, right? You know, I've heard um, uh, a lobbyist talk about it. I've gotten multiple emails, which I'll get into here in a second. I've gotten multiple emails about this. I think 
we ought to attach the safe act onto the farm bill. And that's what we're going to do and what we're working on doing um, with you guys with, with an email campaign. So um, pretty much what I did is I gave Tawny a link um, to a um, to the email campaign where it's actually really simple. This was, um, I've been using uh, the, the system that we have for quite some time and um, it amazes me compared to some of the other systems I used in, in previous jobs um, because this really makes it simple for you guys, right? So um, what will happen is, you know, you open up the page and it'll kind of give you a, a rundown on what we're, what we're going for. And, you know, I can read a little bit off right now, but, you know, we're at a critical juncture um, to ensure the safety and well-being of our nation's equine population. Um, and the SAFE Act, H.R. 3475 um, and uh, Senate Bill 2037, um, it's, it's a beacon of hope, right? And it'll go in, it'll talk about what we're doing. All we need from you guys is you just put in your, um, your name, your first name, last name, email, and then you have to put in your address because what the system does is it'll automatically send it out to your um, Congress, um, Congresswoman, Congressman, or Senator. It just automatically sends it out. Um, and it automatically sends out a message that I already um, put in for, for, for you guys. So there's already a letter there that explains that you're a, um, a constituent of theirs and a member of Force Plus Humane Society, and you're asking for their support of the SAFE Act for them to co-sponsor, but also for them to um, uh, consider uh, uh, getting it on the farm bill, especially if your member of Congress is on um, like an agriculture committee where, where the SAFE Act is. But I was saying, you know, we definitely encourage you guys to, if you need to, um, uh, um, or if you guys have any experiences that are close to you, um, or especially if, you know, if you've met your representative before, right, just pinging them and saying, hey, Congresswoman Adams, uh, I remember, um, you know, last last September when uh, I uh, came to an a, a event of yours and I was able to talk to you about this issue. Da, da, da. I appreciate your attentiveness to um these issues, right? Um, any kind of uh, personal connections that you can tie into some of these letters, we 100% uh, encourage some of those. Um, we do caution for um, a little bit of emotion in the letters, right? Um, uh, it, it's kind of like a catch-22, right? Because um, this is a very important issue um, and we have really strong um, uh, uh, thoughts and wants behind it. But, you know, at the same time, um, you know, these emails, they go to um, a staffer on the Hill. So we want to, uh, you know, best craft it in a way where we can catch the attention of that staffer. So that staffer then translates this, this letter over to um, uh, his or her boss, the congressman or the senator, right? Um, and that's how this process works. Like when we go on the Hill, we talk to the staffers and when we have good experiences and really good information from them uh, to them, they relay that information to their boss, the senators, the congressmen. And that's kind of what we're asking you guys to do as well. Relay a really carefully crafted message um, that's gonna go first to a staffer who works on um, an agriculture committee. And then that staffer is then going to translate, send this letter to his boss and saying, hey, you know, I got, I got 20, emails today um all on the safe act and you know this may be his first his or her first time hearing about the safe act it could be they heard of it before but now they're actually hearing it from their constituents right so they're going to say hey boss you know this issue um is important uh the constituents are talking about it we ought to do something about it right and that's what we're trying to get them to do is we're asking them um to do something about it. And, and, and you guys are, are, are being a part of this process, which is awesome. Um, but that I, kind of- explains... I'm gonna jump in here real quick, Jonathan. I, I think what you just said is so critically important is they might not even know about the SAFE Act. And if they don't know about the SAFE Act, these are the people that actually have the power to end horse slaughter. And that is why it is so incredibly crucial that you contact your representative, you let them know that 
you you want horse slaughter to end or you don't want the past act uh you want the past act to happen so horses aren't being tortured in the big lake mm-hmm. industry and the tennessee walking horses mm-hmm. um so we desperately need americans to come together and say i'm going to reach out to my representative and let them know that I don't want horses slaughtered. I mean, if you did a survey in front of Walmart or something like people wouldn't want horses slaughtered, like, like nobody wants them slaughtered. And I think a really sad thing too, is that, um, people, they, they believe that horse slaughter has ended. And I think even in Washington, DC, some people have that belief, on the hill that horse slaughter is ended and we are um we're all good and unfortunately it it's still happening they're being exported out of the united states to a horrific death in the slaughterhouse and that is just so appalling and we as people can make it stop but we have to use our voices to those in in these offices that have no clue about how horrible it is of what's happening. And that's one thing when I go to Washington, D.C., I'm able to say what I have seen firsthand over the last 21 years. And I walk away from some of these meetings and and Jonathan and Ted, sometimes they're like, we've, we've never heard it explained like this before. Now I understand. And I think especially with like the the big lick horses, the Tennessee walking horses, you know, like I'm able to take one of those huge, you know, eight plus pound stacks up there and, and they're holding it and they're like, wow. And that's why yeah. it's so important for us to go to Washington, D.C. And I think Jonathan can probably talk a little bit about the importance of of Horse Plus going to Washington, um, D.C. And then we'll we'll get to people's questions here, um, too. So I'm going to keep adding people in. And, and if you're listening and you're not muted, um, go ahead and mute yourself. And then um, if you have a question, when we come to the question and answers, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Just like what what, what Tani just said. I mean, the boots on the ground um, actions that we do are very important. That's us getting into the room um, and actually showing them and explaining uh, to them some of the atrocities that are going on and and some solutions like these bills that I mentioned to solve these things, right? and I also wanted to point out, um, um, you know, something that we we um, just talked about um, a little bit earlier in regards to, um, uh, a, you know, maybe an office didn't hear about this bill, right? Um, it, it's it's actually funny because there's even some offices who will co-sponsor a bill. And co-sponsoring is pretty much an office saying like, yes, I support the bill before they actually go and vote for it, right? But there's some offices that will support and, and co-sponsor these bills. And, you know, sometimes they have uh, changes in the office where, um, you know, one staffer will go to another office. That's pretty typical with the hell. But, you know, we'll we'll roll into a meeting and, um, you know, sometimes I could talk to a staffer and they'll say like, oh, I've never heard of this bill, but their, their boss already co-sponsored on it right so it's 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 important to um keep um everyone in the loop um keep um uh, uh relaying messages uh to congress in in the best uh, uh ways as possible and then also to, to keep you guys involved as well so um i don't know if we w- wanted to get into uh questions yeah i think so i think we have one in the chat i'm gonna let you um address there um, so when we do go to Washington, D.C., we are advocating for the wild horses where um, the IHO Act, which is the donkeys being slaughtered for a gelatin in their hide. We're covering all of them. But the most momentum right now is for the SAFE Act and the PAST Act. And if the SAFE Act, if we put all our like, like we come together and we are like, you know what, we are going to help end slaughter because that's what it really it really comes down to and is really eye opening for me going to Washington D.C. and realizing like these are the people that could end this and most of them have no clue how horrible the horses are being treated and if we can come together across the United States and be contacting our representatives and thankfully Jonathan has made it so easy 
uh, with a nice little link there. I did drop it in the chat. So thank you, Jonathan, because that's going to help so many people out because it's complicated. It is complicated. It's very complicated. No, not only is it complicated, but you have to do it in the right way where um, you can even get them to open up the email sometimes, right? You, you know, the carefully crafted emails um, uh, get to inboxes, uh, get to the eyes of the staff, right? and then get to the ears of the congressman. So, yes. All right. So we, um, we're going to open up to questions now. And um, all right, let's see if you want to send it through the the chat, you can, or just unmute yourself. And um, throughout your question in regards to the SAFE Act or the PAST Act or how to reach out to your representative. Um, so um, go ahead and uh, jump in. But um, no, like I, we really appreciate your guys' effort with this, right? There's some times where I have to say, I have to go back to the client and say, hey, you know, it's time that, you know, we need to start activating the troops, right? And get, get getting everyone involved. Um, and, you know, this is one of those times and this is a really fun way uh, to get involved, too, uh, because it's an easy way. Right. It's a, a very easy um, um, way to do it. So um, I do see um, a question. Is it OK to call members of Congress that represent other states? So it's it's weird. So yes and no, but it's leaning a little bit more towards the no side. Right. So when um, you dial um, a congressional number. Let's say if I'm calling um, uh, Congressman Alma Adams' office in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I dial her, and as soon as you answer the phone, they're going to ask, um, what's your zip code? And if I don't say 28269 in Charlotte, North Carolina, if I say my current zip code in Washington, D.C., um, they're going to be like, we apologize, but we're only taking uh, calls from, um, or we're only answering their correspondence from constituents um, within the district, right? So even if, like, even if I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, on the other side of the state, they still might not even take your call because um, you're outside of their district, right? And that's, you know, all about... Um, um, it's a mutual kind of respecting, right? So their job is to represent their constituents. Um, so we want to give them ample time to do it. So when we're calling ours, they can have plenty of time to answer some of the concerns that we have. So I would say, you know, it's not illegal, you know, you have your First Amendment right, but um, they, they are going to direct you um, elsewhere. Um, even with um, this email system, uh, it will only allow you to... Um, uh, reach out to uh, members uh, within your district. Um, it's actually funny. The the reason why is because the you know the system that we use that's approved by um, the House of Representatives and the Senate. Um, that that's a mutual agreement that um, the government, uh, the legislative branch, has made with this company. That's saying yes, we will use your system, but um, it has to only go to to their representatives, right? Okay. Thank you for answering that. I'm going to answer the next one, and then you can do um, the Florida one. So um, the question is, if the SAFE Act passes, does that going to change how the BLM is rounding up horses? Um, it will ultimately change how every everything on the low end that happens to horses will have to dramatically change when the SAFE Act passes, because if the SAFE Act passes and horses are no longer disappearing down to Mexico, like what happens with the BLM horses is they're rounding them up off of public lands, which I do have a podcast and I've been speaking to a lot of Native people and things that um, it seems that horses were actually here in the first place so they're native they're not invasive but they're treat they're being treated by the blm as if they're invasive to the land so the blm is rounding them up by the thousands and they're taking them to holding areas and those holding areas start getting full and unfortunately there's just so much corruption that they horses that are in those holding pens are disappearing and they're disappearing to Mexico. So the SAFE Act is going to be protecting all horses, whether they were wild horses on a public land once or they're the horse that is in your, your friend's pasture. When the SAFE Act passes, 
it's going to put a halt to all these horse traders and all these kill buyers scooping up whatever horse they can find because every single horse has a slaughter price on its head. And you, as a citizen of the United States, have the power to help make that end. And all the rescues across the United States, we can all be out there rescuing all the horses we can, but it's like a huge dam and we're just putting little fingers trying in the dam to try to keep the water from just gushing out. And we have to come and say, we have to change laws. But the SAFE Act has been around forever and it hasn't passed yet. And that is because we need everybody who loves horses to come together and say enough is enough. And if you have seen what I have seen and the trenches of horse rescue for the last 21 years, you would be supporting this and doing everything you can like I am instantly because it is it is so far beyond horrific what happens to these horses. And after 21 years of rescue or, or 20 years, I'm like, this hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. What's happening to these horses is happening year after year, decade after decade, and it's not changing. So the only way we're going to be able to actually make change is we have to change laws on a federal level. On a state level, there's so many good boys that are all connected to everybody that it's they're protecting the kill buyers and the, the traders and the, the system that's set up in the United States is set up to prevent horses from even being rescued. Um, horses are supposed to have a Coggins papers in most states to be able to be sold. So if you're in Tennessee and you want to go purchase a horse from somebody, you can go and purchase it if it has that paper the the seller is supposed to provide that paper for that horse now a trader can come along and or you could take that same person and it's like well i can't find anyone to buy the horse i'm going to take it to an auction instead all of a sudden they don't have to have that coggins paper they can take it to the auction and sell that horse for slaughter without any coggins paper and you take this to another level and this is something where I would love to help more on, but it's hindered by the way the system is set up in the United States to prevent horses from being rescued is say like on one of the reservations, they're rounding up their horses because they have too many and there's not enough gelding programs and, and whatnot there to help keep the horses from populating too quickly. And we're doing a lot of work there. In fact, I'm flying out there. Monday to go help with getting horses gelded and whatnot. And Horse Plus is funding all the gelding operations next week on the Navajo and Hopi Nation. But when I'm out there, I'm asked by the Native people, can you take the horses? They don't want to see them go to slaughter, but they're like, this kill buyers are the only ones that will take them and they will pay us for them, but we don't like it. And so then I dive deeper into this and I'm like, okay, how can we, how can we rescue them? Well, to get them here to our facility, we would have to have Coggins papers, which they, the kill buyers don't need to ship them to slaughter, but we as rescuers have to have the Coggins. Um, we'd have to also have a health certificate. They don't have to have a health certificate if they're going to slaughter. And we'd have to have a vet come in and pull blood on a hundred and 50 or whatever horses and then we would have to um hold those horses until we get the coggins papers back so that the the way the united states system is set up is to prevent horses from being rescued to make it as easy as possible for the kill buyers and protect them in so many so many ways and if the safe act passes it would end all of this. It would it would make it where these horses aren't just being shipped by the semi loads across the borders. And this is where I'm just I'm just begging everyone, please come together. Like Jason, I go to Washington, DC, Jonathan's there, you know, different folks. We're trying, but we need the United States people to say enough is enough. And if you're unfamiliar with how bad the slaughter pipeline is, just just watch our auction rescue videos. It's horrific. 
So I probably talked too long. <laughs> oh, no, no, absolutely not. No, thank you for, for, for that insight. And, you know, just one other thing to touch on um, the SAFE Act, um, like what Tanya mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, this is actually putting it into law, right? So there could be whatever regulation in your state or whatever regulation out there, but there's no penalties for it. This is putting it into law where you cannot ship a, a horse out to slaughter. And um, as Tani said, very important that we get everyone's um, attention and, and um, uh, energy um, uh, towards capital health. So wow. I hear, or I oh, see- let me, let me say one more, one more thing here. Um, so the SAFE Act, like I, I, it's been around forever, but now I feel it's the closest it's ever been to actually happen because mm. the cattle industry and all them, they don't want anything anti-slaughter to go into effect. Um, so any of the bills that connected any of the horses with, with that, they're like, Ugh. what the SAFE Act is this time is it's actually just adding equine to an already existing federal law that's an anti-slaughter for dogs and cats and so we're not we're not trying to say a whole bunch of things it's just like let's add horses because americans aren't wanting to eat horses and we love our horses that helped build our country um it's putting and it, it's adding them to an already existing law like this is the easiest law i've ever seen if we're going to, I mean, it's just a few little letters added to an already existing law. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen now, but your representatives need to hear from you. And then we'll get to, let's see, the next question is, so I wrote to my Congresswoman uh, here in Florida and never got a response. I got a form letter from her staffer. Um, so it was ignored. Um, what more can I do now if they won't listen? So I will say it was not ignored. So pretty much what happens is when we send these letters out, um, you know, uh, uh, if, you know, if you think about it, even think like your state, uh, the state of Florida has a pretty big population. And let's even say if in one month, I would say on average, they might get like 10,000 letters. So, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, no one's going to get a, a, a individually crafted response or typed letter um, uh, from your from your congressman. Unfortunately, uh, just by the, the number and the virtue of their job, it's an impossible thing to do. But they will read it. They'll understand the issue. And then they have um, crafted um, responses that are pretty generic. Um, that could be a little bit, um, uh, you know, some people may find it upsetting, like, oh, they're not caring about this issue because uh, I got this generic letter, right? But that's that's not the case. Um, that's just, you know, unfortunately what they have to do because uh, they're getting a bunch of letters in. But the good thing is, you know, once, you know, um, they'll get, you know, our letter um, on the SAFE Act. And, you know, if, if if someone else is in the same district or the same state, you know, they get another letter and, you know, they, they get three, four, five letters. They're like, hey, this is an issue my constituents are talking about in mass. We need to do something about it, right? So um, don't get alarmed if you're going to get some responses back that are just a generic letter. Someone definitely saw your letter and it went up the chain. And I think that's one reason like this meeting is so important is because there is so much confusion about how to how to reach out to your representative, what happens when you do reach a representative. But like Jonathan said, if everyone's sending emails and being like, hey, we don't want this. And that staffer is like, we got a thousand emails today on people wanting us. They're in our district to support the SAFE Act. That's going to make a huge impact. And they're actually going to be like, it's going to be in their head. They're thinking like that's, this is a really important topic. If people from our area that we're over are reaching out to us and saying, we need you to support this. And that's where it's very important for you to use your voice. Excellent question, Julia. Thank you. Um, and then the next question is asking, uh, what is the best way of communication with your congressional uh, representatives, whether it being a letter or a phone call? Um, actually, um, and you guys are all lucky that, um, you know, your member of Horse Plus and Horse Plus decided to get a lobbyist uh, because the, uh, the lobbyist is the best method of communication. Uh, pretty much what, uh, you know, I explain, you know, what, what I do on a daily so I don't have to uh, bore you guys. But, you know, the good thing about having a lobbyist who lives in D.C., um, you know, not only are these, you know, some of these people I've met with multiple times just by virtue of the job coming in with different meetings and they remember us. But, um, you know, some of these people are the 
same people that um, you see at a restaurant or you see at a baseball game, right? Um, so uh, having that connection and, you know, when I see people like there's um, um, an ag staffer uh, who lives in my building um, and I'm uh, picking his brain all the time. He's picking my brain uh, on some of the clients that I have and just having that relationship um, is a really good way for us to communicate. But, um, you know, outside of, you know, just, you know, hey, I'm going to hire a lobbyist, um, you know, should I make letters or phone calls? I personally think letters are a little bit more receptive uh, just because the phone calls are going to be answered by the interns in the office. Um, so you're not getting your subject matter expert. Um, so a, a letter, uh, but I would uh, specify and say uh, even 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 more so um, kind of the letters, what we're doing, those carefully crafted ones um, are, 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 are a really good way um, to get these out. And when uh, Jason and I are in Washington, D.C., like if you would like to send a letter to us and have us hand deliver it. When we're when we're there, we are more than happy to do that. So you can mail that letter to Horse Plus Humane Society, P.O. Box 485, Hole in Wall, which is a mouthful, <laughs> Hole in Wall, Tennessee, 38462. And um, I'll be more than happy to put your letters in my suitcase. And then when I'm there, it will it will help me out, too, because it's very important to have voices from their their districts and, and coming forward and saying, so if I can go there and be like, Hey, I have someone from Florida and that's in your, your district that has reached out and said, um, you know, like they reached out through a letter and they knew I was coming and they wanted me to, to personally deliver this too. Like, and if I can deliver a stack of 50 letters to sign, like that's going to make an impact. Um, so everyone in the United States can definitely make a huge impact but we have to be proactive and we have to use our voices and if we're if we're going to stop horse slaughter we need you to be the voice for the horse horses don't have their own voice they can't speak for themselves they can't share the torture that's happening with them but you can be that voice for them and write those letters so it can get to washington and actually put a law in place that can stop it and then um, the next question I see is how exactly will this stop? Will there be a penalty? And the answer is yes. Um, so violators of the law um, will receive a penalty fee. And um, just like any other law, you know, after so many um, uh, face jail time. So um, that's how um, the uh, that's how dogs and cats are already enforced. And then we're adding um, equine uh, on this, which will include um, what we're going for. And I, I think, too, to jump off that question is it is so incredibly important to pass the SAFE Act if we want to put an end to the abuse that's happening to horses. When horses enter the slaughter pipeline, their their rights are stripped away. Um, sadly, the horses like in the USDA, there are people that govern how cattle are transported and shipped to slaughter and they're being transported, you know, from from an auction to a slaughterhouse. And there's there's oversight on all of that, but there is no oversight really when it comes to horses at all. And when these horses enter the slaughter pipeline, they go from auction to auction to auction across the United States. And you can have horses with old broken legs. You can have horses that are emaciated. You can have horses that um, have, you know, extremely dehydrated. They haven't had food in a like week. Um, you have horrible things that are happening. And the way the current system is set up, so if I went to an auction and I see a horse that's emaciated that some trader brings in, and I'm like, I'm going to call 911 and say, this is not okay. They will send an officer out there and that trader will be like, hey, he was like this when I bought him. I brought him to this auction. I'm hoping somebody can can help him out. And law enforcement walks away. They're like, OK, he didn't do that to that horse. And that happens at time and time and time again across the United States where horses are just shuffled from auction to auction. Their abuse and neglect is so horrific. I have seen firsthand that it would make you shudder and give you nightmares at night. But it's allowed because of the slaughter pipeline, because there's no oversight, 
the torture and horrificness that happens to these horses is just unfathomable. And it's shocking that this is in the United States and happening to thousands of horses. Mm -hmm. About three to 400 every single week are going through the slaughter pipeline and exported into Mexico. And there's no penalties. There is nothing that's happening for the unjustness that's happening to these horses. And you might even have somebody that is starving a horse or maybe maybe they just haven't had any hoof care and law enforcement will go out and say, hey, you're not taking care of your horse. And they're like, well, I don't even want this horse. And they're like, well, you can take it to an auction. Or they might say, well, do you have Coggins on this horse? If you do, you can sell it to the public. And they're like, I don't have Coggins. Horse hasn't seen a vet in years. I can't afford to give it Coggins. And so then they're like, well, you can take it to an auction because there's that system that's set up to prevent horses from getting rescued. So they take the horse to an auction. And I have seen animal control bring horses that they have seized to auctions and sell them into the slaughter pipeline. And as long as the SAFE Act has not passed and horses are shipping to slaughter, horses will continue to be abused and neglected and tortured without any anything going on at these auctions. Animal control even bringing horses to auctions where they enter the slaughter pipeline with horrific abuse. You have law enforcement encouraging people to bring horses to auction where they will enter the slaughter pipeline and have all this abuse. If the SAFE Act passes, the slaughter pipe, like every single horse in the United States has a slaughter price on its head. And a lot of horses are stolen and taken to auctions. So it could be a little girl's horse. And somebody's like, I want $500. I'm going to steal that horse and take it to an auction. That horse disappears. Little girl's heartbroken. And that horse disappears into the slaughter pipeline because it had a slaughter price on its head. When and and they can just disappear. When the safe, uh, yeah, when when the safe act passes, there will not be that slaughter price on every single horse. Law enforcement, when they get an abuse case going on a horse, they can't tell the owner, just take it to an auction, get rid of it. Because they're going to have to actually have a different system that's set up in the United States for protecting and helping horses. And right now, the only system that's out there is a system that makes horses disappear and makes it hard for rescuers to rescue them and makes it as easy as possible for traders and kill buyers to send them into the slaughter pipeline. So we have to get the SAFE Act passed if we ever want to see horses actually being protected and owners being prosecuted. And I know it's really frustrating when we're rescuing horses and you're seeing horrific, horrific abuse happen. And, you know, like horses that have gone for years with a broken, twisted leg. And it's like, how has this happened? How, why aren't the owners getting prosecuted? It's because of the slaughter pipeline system that we have in the United States. And I can't tell you how frustrating it is to get horses in this condition and not be able to get justice for them. If the SAFE Act passes, horses, owners will have to be accountable and be responsible. Horses won't disappear. And if some, some owners not taking care of them or horses being abused, justice will be forced to happen because that horse can't disappear in the slaughter pipeline. So yes, I think that's an excellent question. And it all comes down to ending horse slaughter right at the borders. Absolutely. And I see the next question um, someone is asking, here it is. I'm from the UK. Um, you have a lot of supporters in the UK. And, and, and um, me and Tani actually talked about this um, a couple of days ago. Um, how can you guys help? So um, the best thing that you guys can do is to share um, the link that um, I provided, the link that Tani provided over to you, to your friends um, in, in the States. You know, unfortunately, um, um, people outside of the United States cannot talk to um uh, or cannot lobby um, uh, U.S. Congress, right? So unfortunately, as far as sending out a letter and, and things like that, um, it's a little limited. But um, you can definitely, you know, encourage other people um, to um, uh, uh, shoot out similar language. And then also, you know, I I, uh, I, I think in the U.K. Um, they are trying to pass similar legislation because I think horse slaughter is still legal 
Um, actually, I was um I was an intern in the House of Commons um uh, back in the day a couple of years ago. Um, but um I, you know, getting involved in 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 the UK, um, uh, wherever country you may be, if you're if you're tuning in internationally, um, is a great way to get involved along with uh, passing this information out along um to your U.S. friends. And I think just, you know, sharing it on social media, whether, you know, if you're in the UK or you're in Australia, you're raising awareness when uh, people realize what's happening in the United States. And it's very appalling for people to um, realize that horses are being treated the way they are in the United States. And I have gone to other countries and I've shown people the videos of of the horses I'm rescuing and they are shocked. They're like, this is happening in the United States. How, how on earth, how is this happening? And the more you share this around the world, the more awareness it's going to happen. And you might not have any friends in the United States, but you share it onto your social media platforms into your groups and like, Hey, look what's happening in the United States. The next person who reads that, they might have friends in the United States and they can reach out to them and say, hey, this is happening in your country. Please, um, let's put an end to this. And then the next question I see, this might be um, for you, Tani. Um, so when the Save Act gets packed, passed, um, where will all the horses go? Our rescues and sanctuaries are already pretty full. So the horses that are going to slaughter currently already are somewhere. Um, there's a lot of ranches, there's horses that are being bred for slaughter, unfortunately. Um, you know, like, it's not like they're breeding them for slaughter if you ask them, but there's backyard breeders that know there's somewhere these horses can go and they have a slaughter price on their head. So they will just, just breed them. So if the slaughter pipeline stopped tomorrow, there would be horses in transit that would desperately need help. And that's why Horse Plus is here. Like we we have a huge system set up across the United States of rescues. Every horse within the United States has a full circle life horse shelter within a day's drive it can go to. All these organizations are ready to help horses when, like they're helping horses now, but when the, the SAFE Act passes and these, these borders are shut down, horses being shipped out, they're ready to step forward and help these horses. A lot of horses that are being shipped to slaughter, there's tons of healthy horses and um, everything. Horses, very adoptable horses that are getting shipped to slaughter. But there are a lot of horses that are being shipped to slaughter who have been seen by a vet, who have a medical problem, and it costs this much to have the horse um, you know, treated for this medical problem. And if the owner doesn't want to do it, and they're like, well, how much is euthanasia? And they say, well, it's about $200. And and uh, for horse people, I mean, board, boarding a horse at a stable is about $500 a month. So depending on where you are, I mean, that's that's probably cheap for a lot of people. Um, so if your horse needs humane euthanasia, $200 for a horse person is feasible because you have that animal, you've been paying for that animal. Um, so instead of so many, like, so you're, you're at the vet, you're trying to make these decisions and then... Your friend is like, hey, you know, I know this guy who who purchases horses and, and maybe he could find the horse a good home. And you're like, hmm, OK, well, if I can't take care of the horse and and he purchases them because they have a slaughter price on their head. And so then you have somebody who, um, you know, the horse is at the vet. The horse could get help. The horse could, you know, has a medical problem. It could be humanely euthanized. But then they realize I could make money off this horse. So they reach out to the friend that, you know, knows this person and, oh, yeah, I'll give the horse, I'll find a horse a good home, blah, blah, blah. And that horse goes to slaughter. When it could have been given humane euthanasia, the last act of kindness at the veterinarian's office. And I can't tell you how many, I mean, I could if I had to get down in all the numbers, but we rescue so many horses that were at some point loved cherished horses and they got older, they got a medical problem and their owners are like, I can't 
take care of this horse anymore. And instead of working with their veterinarian and saying, you know what, I love my horse, but it has this medical condition and it, it, I'm not going to be able to, you know, pay for that expensive medication every, every month. And I, I think humane euthanasia is probably going to be the best option since my horse has a medical condition or my horse is getting older. Then that horse is humanely euthanized. It never goes into the slaughter pipeline. So when the SAFE Act passes, yes, there will be some time for those horses that are in that pipeline, all the horses that are in the auction. But we're talking about probably less than a thousand horses that are moving through the slaughter pipeline for the purpose of going to Mexico. And we have organizations across the United States, like I said, that are are we're all waiting for this to happen. And we will be there for these horses and these horses will be seen by veterinarians. And if they need the last act of kindness, then that's what they'll get. And if they're adoptable, we'll be asking for homes for them. Um, but the thought of, well, let's not pass this because what's going to happen to the horses? What's happening to the horses right now is absolutely horrible and horrific. It's not a way for horses to disappear. If horses, I mean, if you, if you watch slaughter videos, it is, it is horrible. And the torture that I've seen firsthand for the horse to even get to the slaughterhouse is beyond what anyone should ever have to see that loves animals and cares about them. And so we need to focus on, yes, we can make this happen. We can stop it. And yes, there are organizations in the United States that are ready to help these horses. And yes, there'll, there'll be a lot of horses that need humane euthanasia, but that is given with love, care, respect, veterinarian evaluations, and people who care about them. But what's happening to the American horses now is they are sh jammed in trucks, taken from auction to auction, kicked, starved, beaten, and then absolutely tortured at the end of their life at a slaughterhouse. Like, this is not the way to make horses disappear in the United States and pretend that we don't need to address this issue. This is a critical issue that has to be addressed because horses are being tortured beyond, beyond what you could even ever imagine. And then I see the last question on here. Um, my representatives don't act up on it if I contact them. Uh, you, I contact them no matter um, what party. So um, I would say, so just because, like, let's look at a co-sponsor list, right? Uh, there's some times where a uh, congressman, congresswoman will see a bill and they're like, you know, I would support this, but I can't really put my name behind a co-sponsorship uh, very early on in, 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 in the letter. Um, so they, you know, might say, hey, we're not going to co-sponsor this, but, you know, when it comes to the floor, we'll vote on it and they'll vote on it. Right. And then, you know, um, unfortunately, there's also the sense where, um, you know, uh, as as hard as, you know, um, we try. Right. Some offices and some people just have um, uh, already dialed in uh, answers on, you know, this is going to be my stance on this issue. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we run into that and, you know, we um, we tell the office, we say thank you. Um, uh, but, you know, it's like I said, it's a, a mutual thing. Um, uh, what, what, what we do as lobbyists up in DC, if, you know, if we go into an office, um, that, you know, might not support us, we'll ask them like, Hey, well, you know, um, if what kind of language in, in, in the text would, uh, uh, would you recommend, uh, uh, if you guys were to support on board, right? So it's still keeping the same positive relationship, um, although even though they might not, um, uh, come on board. Right. And, and it, it's a tough thing. I know it is, this is a really, uh, passionate issue. Um, and, you know, it's, you know, sometimes you just want to, you know, tell, you know, your congressman, you know, they're being idiots about this, this and that. Um, but you know, that's not the healthiest way, um, to go about it. Right. You know, unfortunately, if they just don't support, um, um, you could say, you know, I, you know, I hope in the future that you would consider changing your mind. But if you don't mind uh, sharing um, what language uh, in this bill uh, that could possibly get um, uh, your office um, involved, right, um, to get them to get them on board. So I hope that that answered that question. Yeah, and that kind of made me think of the last time we were in Washington D.C. there with you lobbying. 
um, we were able to actually meet one of the, um, I can't remember who it was, but we were able to go into the, the big office. So when you go into these offices, there's like the staffing part and then there's this great so big fancy, uh, yep. yeah, fancy, fancy office that you get to go in. And that's where the actual representative's office is. And mm -hmm. we were actually able to meet with one of them who was pro slaughter. Mm -hmm. And we had one of the best conversations, I think because we knew what we were talking about when we were there. And he, he's like, you know, I am pro slaughter and I'm like, okay. And you know, I'm like, do you know that the AVMA, the American Veterinarian Association has done a study and they've removed their support from horse slaughter. And he had no idea that that had happened. And then, um, through the conversation, he's like, well, I am against, um, abuse but I'm, I am for slaughter. And we were able to share with him firsthand that, I mean, slaughter is horrible, but the abuse that these horses go through in this, this slaughter pipeline is horrific abuse. And he was like, wow, you know, I did not realize this. And, and this is where it's so important for Jason and I to go up to Washington DC and have these face-to-face -face talks. Cause we're able to come from a perspective of, you know, we're not somebody that's just like, well, here's the information we're supposed to present. We're coming from a place that actually has been our boots on the ground for over two decades. And um, I think like that meeting was was an amazing meeting, even though right from the get go, I'm pro slaughter. And we were able to, um, you know, talk about the corruption of the what's happening with the kill buyers and all the shady things that they're doing. And and he's like, I am I'm not for that at all. And mm -hmm. Prior to that meeting, if you asked him, he's like, I'm, oh yeah, I'm pro slaughter. He had no concept of what's happening to have horses get to slaughter. And now he does. And I know that it might seem really frustrating to, you know, be contacting them and not having, you know, them contact you back or they're not doing what you, you think they should be, but it's important to remember that the safe act has not passed and we have to change what we're doing as a as a whole body of horse lovers across the united states we have to come together as a united front and that's why horse plus is is getting involved in in this is like after 21 years we're not seeing anything change so that's where we need every every horse lover in the united states to be reaching out to your representative because if they are um if they are you know, maybe getting one email and they're like, it's not that big of a deal. But if they got a hundred, I mean, there's way more than a hundred horse lovers in different districts. If we can get all the horse lovers together and like unitedly, we are pushing to get, um, you know, like this link that Jonathan has made for us, you know, out there and sending it out there and being like, Hey, this is super easy. Like Jonathan has made it so easy for you all to, to just fill it out. And it goes to the right person and if we can just be blasting their emails and bringing this very important issue to the forefront, it's really going to actually make a difference, I feel. And together we can make it happen. So I, I, I feel, you know, that you're, you're like, I, I contact him, nothing happened. That's why we're having these meetings. That's why Horse Plus is getting involved in lobbying is together we can make it happen. Individually, it, it hasn't happened yet. And that's where everybody's got to come together and together it will happen, but we have to come together and actually make it happen. And um, I see um, one last question. There, there was two, but I just responded to one. Um, they were asking for the link that, that I made. Uh, thank you for the thumbs up, um, Anna. Um, but I think this is a, um, a Yutani question. And then I do have to um, hop off uh, for a four o'clock. Uh, meeting, unfortunately, after this. So I think this might be my last question. But um, the question is, are animal rescues working together on trying to achieve this goal? Are other organizations on board? Um, and the question for Tani. But um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan, anytime you're you're welcome to head off before uh, while I'm answering this no, question. No, no, no. But yeah. um, we just I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk with um, our our supporters and viewers, because that's it's there's so much misconceptions of what's happening with changing laws. Um, so for this question, um, 
Unfortunately, in the rescue world, there is a lot of um, fighting between uh, different organizations and uh, everyone can do it better. And I, I, I read one, um, one thing that one organization posted and we're like, we're the only horse rescue serving horses in all, all the counties of Tennessee. And I'm like, well, that's not true. <laughs> um, it's everyone's trying to be like, we're the only, like nobody else is doing this. And we have to, as organizations, we have to put all of our, like, we, we don't like the kill buyers. We don't like the horses being shipped to slaughter. We have to come together as a united front and all be working together. And over the last five years, that's what we've been doing with the Full Circle Life Force Shelter Network. And we now have a network of organizations across the United States that are all on board and are there wanting to help in any way they can. And when I go to Washington, D.C., like I can take a letter of endorsement from all these organizations that are saying, we want the SAFE Act and the PAST Act and these acts that would protect horses we need it to pass. And so organizations are on board and we are building a stronger and stronger network. We're going to have a whole lot of organizations joining in May. We're doing a workshop and part of the training of, of organizations for the full circle life going forward is part of it is lobbying part of it. Like we can't just be just rescuing these horses and not changing these laws. Um, so that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So thank you so much, everyone. Yes, thank you so um, much, I, I really appreciate you guys um, uh, coming on board. Um, like I mentioned, you know, I sent in uh, the link um, uh, to that Voter Voice campaign. So your responses are going to be uh, greatly appreciated. Um, and then, you know, um, everything's laid out. All we need is your name, your uh, you put in your address, your zip code. Um, and then uh, if you wanted to add, um, you know, a nice message to to your congressman, you can add um, a sentence or two kind of wherever you, you'd like for it to go. Um, but then all you have to do is click send and then, you know, it's all it's all good to go. So we really appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you so much. And if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to um, Tani and then uh, Tani can share those over to me if, if they're a question for me or obviously if you guys have a question for Tani um, and then we can get those um, answered for you guys. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you, Jane, for sending the clapping hands. I saw that a couple of times. I was like, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> um, but yes, together we will unite and we will come together and end horse slaughter but the reason it hasn't happened yet is because everyone's just not sure what they're supposed to do they're not sure if it's making a difference and together we can make a difference so thank you so much for joining and listening to this and please um as soon as you're done listening fill out that link and um the there's a huge majority supporting this already like i mean i feel like the house of robert like there's 200 and something in each um and so we are so close to getting um this passed so i know we can and it's a matter of coming together so thank you so much um for joining and listening to this and um soon the safe act will pass and it'll be because of you mm -hmm.